The black South African, Bishop Desmond Tutu, was today awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. It was in recognition of the fight within his country against apartheid. The citation said, the committee wishes to direct attention to the non-violent struggle for liberation to which Desmond Tutu belongs, a struggle in which black and white South Africans unite to bring their country out of conflict and crisis. The government's reaction was minimal, though it did remark that the bishop would have to apply in the normal way for a passport to go to receive the award. But the black community, and many whites too, were jubilant. Bishop Tutu himself heard the news in New York, where he's been lecturing. And his first thoughts were for the encouragement the award would give to his people. This award is really being given uh, for all these people, those who are the victims of apartheid, the numberless little people. There's been almost universal approval of the choice of Bishop Tutu for the prize. I'll be talking to the bishop shortly, but first of all, Paul Barry examines just how much influence he has back home in South Africa and what effect the award might have the, there. The uh, hostesses came along with a book and she wanted an autograph. And she said, uh, she said to me, um, um, one of the passengers uh, would like you to autograph this. You are Bishop Muzarewa, aren't you? <laughs> For once surrounded by oppression and devoted to the struggle against it, Bishop Desmond Tutu displays a remarkable sense of humour. Combine it with transparent Christian honesty and you have a formidable opponent of the South African government's system of apartheid. As head of the South African Council of Churches, Bishop Tutu is spiritual leader of some 12 million South African Christians, black, white and coloured alike. But he speaks out too to say what the disadvantaged feel and his award will be greeted with joy by South African blacks just as it is welcomed by another turbulent priest who years ago trained Tutu for the priesthood. As a person, he deserves it. As the representative of his people, he deserves it. And as a Christian leader, he deserves it. At every level, nobody is more qualified to receive this prize than Desmond. And I can speak with authority because I've known him for so long. A man of peace, but not a pacifist, Tutu passionately believes in reconciliation but says it can come only by looking stark facts in the face. His Christian principles compel him to condemn apartheid, and he does so in terms that would make a British liberal blanch. Immoral, unbiblical, evil, unchristian, iniquitous, vicious, no better than communism or Nazism, he calls it, a system designed to make black men serfs forever. Change must come, he says, and it will, a message he spreads to black and white alike. We blacks are daily amazed that people like you, with a history and a tradition such as yours, have not learned a major lesson of history, that when people decide to be free, then dear friends, nothing, absolutely nothing, is going to stop them from becoming free. For Tutu, non-violence must always be the way forward. But in 1983, after the funerals of three terrorists executed by police, he spoke less guardedly to the men's families and supporters. Now, I want to ask you, are you committed to total freedom at whatever cost? Yes! For all that he is working for peace, it could be said that his fight against apartheid will fuel the very violence he abhors. I think white people, um, distrust the bishop more than black people do. Um, although he's not really seen as a man of violence, uh, he's not associated with the ANC or with sabotage, people think that what uh, he does will in the end result in turmoil. Uh, many white people do think that. Many white people do not think that what the bishop can achieve will be peace and stability for all. Do you think that what he is doing is furthering peace, or is it, is it not fighting for justice? Uh, it's fighting for justice, but that is part of the battle for peace. In fact, a major part in South Africa. I've been pleading, and he, of course, has been pleading for years for the world to understand, particularly the countries of the West, that there will be no peace in Southern Africa without justice. There cannot be. And therefore, what he is doing as a Christian voice is proclaiming this truth. The recent constitutional changes in South Africa have given some small say to Asians and coloureds in running their own affairs. But for blacks, there is nothing. 
and on the streets, perhaps because of that, the violence has flared again. The name of Sharpeville is once more in the news. At such a time, to honour one of the loudest opponents of apartheid, albeit a non-violent one, seems likely to anger the guardians of the system that these rioters are trying to demolish. The South African government will feel this is yet another slap in the face uh, for them from the international community. And, th and that also is a positive thing. It couldn't happen to a bench better bunch of people. Tonight, Bishop Tutu will be flying back home, no doubt to a hero's welcome. But earlier, I spoke to him in New York about today's award. Bishop, in congratulating you on this award, let me ask you if you agree with those who have already described it as something of a slap in the face for the South African government. Thank you very much for your, for your congratulations. Um, the award has certainly uh, sent a very strong uh, political signal to the South African government uh, in pointing out that uh, the world cares about injustice and oppression and affirming those who are opposed to apartheid. Do you think it's a signal, however, that will have any effect on the government or on life in South Africa? Um, I believe that uh, this is not just a personal award. It is uh, a corporate award uh, involving so many people uh, at home and around the world who have supported us with their prayers. And it is saying to the South African government whether they pay attention to this or not, or appear not to pay, at pay attention, uh, you, you will not be accepted into the family of free nations until you dismantle apartheid. Even though your supporters have their morale boosted by yes. your winning the prize, <clears throat> do you think there's a, there's a danger that perhaps they might be encouraged into taking uh, stronger measures in support of black liberation in South Africa, including violent measures perhaps? Uh, we have to underline, haven't we, that uh, the primary violence in South Africa is the violence of the apartheid system, the violence of forced population removals, the violence of uh, excluding 70% of the population from a meaningful participation in um, uh, the political decision-making processes. And the remarkable thing is that our people have been so patient, I mean, peace-loving to a fault. And one would not be surprised that unless the international community um, intervenes on our behalf, that people then uh, decide to escalate um, the violence uh, in, in that situation in trying to correct it. So is, is it possible then, although you have won the Nobel Peace Prize, that yes. the, 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 the struggle with which you are identified against apartheid cannot be resolved in the end without greater violence? Uh, I believe that there is still the outside chance. I, I am the perennial optimist. I still believe that there is an outside chance that... Uh, if the international community exerts political, diplomatic, but above all economic pressure on the South African government uh, for us to resolve that crisis uh, by reasonably peaceful means. If that fails, of course, then the only alternative left is that which Mr. Foster called the, the alternative too costly to contemplate the bloodbath. Bishop Tutu, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.